Hello friends, uh, Solomon Smilak with Padu Club here, and uh, I learned something new about boards and the lacquer on the boards. So I thought today would be a good chance to make use of some of the new monkey wax that I made. Um, we've just recently cleaned off a pair of bowls. Um, the board was already waxed once, but I'm going to go ahead and wax it again because what I've heard is that the, or read, is that the uh, grid lines on a board are made with Ugershi lacquer, which uh, is in the poison ivy family. So um, not only is it important when, uh, when taking care of a board to treat it like poison ivy, you know, wear non-latex gloves, um, do it in a well-ventilated area with a respirator. I'm gonna go ahead and take it outside. Um, but the product um, turpentine can thin Urushi lacquer. I don't know if that's the case after you know it's it's been it's been cured, especially with my vintage stuff, which which has been on there for 20, 30, 50, 80 years. Um, I don't think that the wax is going to do anything to it. But I, I want to make sure, so I'm going to try taking some um, some very fine steel wool that's uh, four zeros or quad aught steel wool. And uh, going ahead and waxing the board with that, giving it giving it a little bit of elbow grease and seeing if, if the lacquer moves at all. If, if I smear it or anything else, then I'm probably going to have to have to recall these or something. Um, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, if you're concerned about it, what, one thing you could always do is just use a cloth instead of steel wool, something a little bit softer. Um, don't use turpentine directly on your board. That would be another thing you could do to, to make sure the lacquer doesn't thin at all. Um, the bowls, I'm going to go ahead and polish. Um, again, I'm going to use the quad off steel wool on that. Um, one thing you can do uh, is a cloth, but, but quad off steel wool is actually quite soft. Um, it's not going to scratch, it's not going to put scratches in the grains of the bowls. Um, if you're cleaning bowls with steel wool, you probably want to go with the grains though. Um, that'll help a lot. And if you have bowls that are finished, you're probably going to want a different product. You're going to want a product that doesn't have linseed oil in it. You just want to go with uh, maybe Minwax, a paste wax, or just, uh, um, you can always just use beeswax and a hair dryer to warm it up. Um, so, but if you, the nice thing, if you've got a finished set of bowls that have a shellac or um, lacquer coating on them, is that you can use uh, maybe a, a slightly tougher, um, applicator. So you could use two zero steel wool and that would um, be a slight bit more abrasive but you, but since you've got that coating between the the applicator and the wood you're not actually scraping the wood you're just scraping the lacquer which is just fine. So you can use double zero um, steel wool to put the wax on but then probably go with quad zero to take the wax off to do the buffing motion. Um, Myself, I usually put on the wax with quad aught and then buff it with a cloth since I'm working on raw wood. So uh, these, these uh, I believe, are quince or, or rosewood, Indian rosewood bowls. Um, I cleaned them up with some turpentine. They were pretty, pretty gnarly. Um, I've got an unboxing video where you can, where you can watch me gasp at how, how neglected they are. And uh, so I'm going to apply some of my monkey wax to those. Um, and then uh, we'll go outside and do the board outside. I'll probably just time lapse this all so you're not bored out of your minds. And then if once it's done, I'm going to go ahead and let them uh, dry for about an hour to let the wax set, to let the turpentine evaporate. Um, and after that, I'll polish them and then give them a, a week to cure just to be safe. Um, two or three days should be fine for curing, but um, it's always good to overestimate, especially here. I've got a pretty cold climate out here in Colorado. So if you live somewhere cold or damp, or that's where your, your stuff is curing out in the garage, go ahead and give it some extra time to cure so that the linseed um, finishes its polymerization process before you handle your board or bowls or uh, wood handled tools or whatever it is, a crib, whatever it is that you're using the wax on. All right, so without any further ado, I'm gonna strap on some vinyl gloves and, uh, and get to work. If you have any questions, I'll take those down in the comments. I'll be sure to respond to any comments you have and uh, let me know what you think.
So what I'm doing here is uh, just giving it a nice thin layer. You don't need a heavy layer. The, uh, the steel wool is really good at getting into the grains of, of the wood. So you get a nice luster all over. I do start on the bottom just to get an idea of if there's if it's uh, having the effect I want. A nice inconspicuous area is where you want to start, and then I'm going over the entire the entire bowl, um, rubbing with the grain across the grain. I'm doing circles, as you can see, and I want to get off globs. Globs of linseed oil will, you know, make wood slightly darker in that spot, which I don't want. Maybe I'll come back over this with a cloth in a minute to take off any, any globs I can see. That looks pretty good. Flip the inside. Probably should have done the inside first. Honestly, you never see the inside of the, board, the bowls because you've got stones in them, so it does make a little more sense to start with the insides. Um, there's also a couple micro fractures in the wood on this bowl. So that's actually a, a good reason to use linseed oil. Um, they're not, not full on cracks. Um, if, if that was the case, I might go ahead and uh, give it a full layer of linseed oil, just a full coating to, uh, to, to give it some strength. Once that linseed oil polymerizes, it becomes quite hard. Um, the wax has linseed in it, but it's not nearly as much as you would get with, uh, with a straight coating of linseed. So with that, I think we're pretty good. I'll come back and grab the globs in a moment. And it doesn't take a lot. You notice I'm not having to, to reapply a charged um, the, the wool once, and I'm still, I still see wax streaks in here. That lets me know I'm, I've still got a decent amount of wax. In with the steel wool. I'm just giving it, giving it a nice, a nice luster already. You can tell it's already having an effect. Now wood, wood uh, really does come to life with a tiny bit of moisture. And so your initial color change is gonna be muted down a little bit over time as the wax dries, but it's really got a nice, a nice luster right off the bat. Now again, you shouldn't shouldn't need gloves for just doing bowls um, with my product because it, it's got uh, just regular linseed oil and that's pure, so it doesn't have any uh, drying agents in it. Uh, but if you're sensitive to linseed oil or to turpentine, then you'll want to wear gloves. You'll also probably need a, a respirator or something. I don't mind a little bit of turpentine in the morning, so I'm going to go without for now. But I am going to go outside when it comes to the board because uh, I do not like poison ivy one bit, and that's and that's one of the concerns, one of the one of the bigger reasons for today's today's video. All right, I told you I would time lapse it. I'm gonna do that. We'll get this, these other bowls waxed up, cleaned a little bit with the cloth, and then we'll get to the board. We'll take that outside.
Oh, I lied. Uh, one, one last thing. Uh, wear clothes you don't care about. Um, wax uh, is not easy to get out of clothes. Um, if, you, if you're melting your own beeswax, you will find that out. Um, I think vinegar? I have to do a Google search. I think, I think you can apply vinegar if it's, if you get some wax on something you do care about, um, apply some vinegar right away. You might be able to scrub it out. Um, but once it's dried, wax is, is not a fun thing to have to clean up. Not at all. Okay. For realsies. So uh, I brought some regular paper out for these to rest on. Um, one thing with newspaper is you'll get that ink from the newsprint coming up and attaching to everything if that's what you're using. So advise against that, um, a towel, some, uh, something else besides newsprint is probably good. I'm going to take this outside and we'll get this board going. I just brought a little stand for it to sit on. Uh, that I can do all four sides. I'll just put this in the little belly button for it to sit, rather than having to do most of the sides and leave one for later. Bring this with me so it can dry outside.
so that was it. Um, I've taken the board out to the garage to dry. I'm going to take the globs off of this bowl before I let it cure for an hour, or let, let the uh, wax set up for an hour, rather. Just because just you, you'll notice if you leave linseed on in globs, you'll get a slightly darker spot underneath where those globs were. We want to avoid that. And as always, remember to take your uh, any linseed soaked rags, flatten them out when they dry. So go ahead and just put them on the on the stone ground or concrete, weigh them down with something so they don't blow away. Got a pretty windy day here today. And then just let the, let that linseed do its um, polymerization and so that heat doesn't build up. If you've got your rags wadded up, then they can potentially start a fire, and that's no good. Um, so I'm almost done here. Um, I'll just come back in half an hour to uh, maybe give it an hour. This is pretty soft with the turpentine. Give it, give it an hour to let the turpentine evaporate and the wax to set, and then I will um, oof, should have used should have used a lint free rag. This is just an old towel I cut up. But if you've got an old T-shirt, um, that's a pretty good fine lint free object you can use. Um, another reason I have it in drying in the board drying in the garage instead of outside is because I don't want anything landing and sticking in the wax uh, while it while it dries. Sawdust or debris. So that's that. Um, hopefully, we'll be doing more of these. I've got a few unboxing videos to share, and if we get to a thousand subscribers, then I can start doing uh, live broadcasts of my refurbishing, and that'll make it a little more. A little easier for me, so I don't have to upload, download things to the cloud. Just hit go live and share my refurbishing with you on the spot. So that's all for now. Um, I'll look to the comments for any questions you have. I'm going to take these outside just because I did do the board and I'm concerned a little bit about that poison ivy um, element in the Urushi lacquer. It didn't seem to come off at all. Uh, so that was with, with, uh, quad off steel wool. Let me get a little product placement for that. So this is the steel wool I'm using. Again, it's just quad zero, four zero grade, which is the super fine. And that's what you want to use. It's pretty soft, so you can use it on bare wood without, without scratching the wood. Um, and the, uh, wood, the board is actually a pretty soft wood, so you'll notice, um, I'll take some pictures of it, you can see the little pitting from where people played really hard, uh, move, <laughs> played their pieces really hard. Again, that's uh, something you want to avoid if you're working on, if you're playing on a fine board like that. Um, Kaya or Katsura boards are very soft, so they will, um, hold that, uh, impression of your of your aggressive move for the rest of the board's life so something to keep in mind while you're playing uh, you should be having fun try not to get too carried away all right questions in the comments um and uh i'll see you next time